So, you know, Muslims, you say to the Christians, Merry Christmas, you don't say Merry Christmas. We are happy and you are sad. Who care? I mean, you see, you Muslims, you Muslims, your hate is, is destroying you. You can't live like a human being, like the rest of, of the world. And, you know, for those who they don't like Christmas, even there's some naive Christians, they don't like Christmas. Let me tell you something. I know Muslims who converted to Christianity. Converted to Christianity. And one of the reasons they love Christianity is what happened in Christmas. When, say, the Christians gathering, gathering together, praying together, celebrating peace of the Messiah together, giving charities, and loving the world for the name of Christ. Christmas is an amazing way to reach out to the pagan Muslims. Muslim children in every house, he feel jealous. For your child can celebrate Christmas, he cannot. This is why if you go in the Middle East, in the heart of Saudi Arabia, there you will see that people secretly, they are celebrating Christmas. For the name of Christ, bring happiness to every house. So don't be naive and say Christmas should not be celebrated. Christmas is a great way to show the truth about the Messiah, the loving, the merciful, the peaceful. By his name, the whole world celebrate peace. Even you go to Japan, which most of people are not even Christians, they celebrate Christmas. Christmas is bringing a lot of people to Christ. But the naive ones don't know. I'm going to China next month. Oh, maybe I should not say that. Did I say China? No, it was not China. I I I meant uh, 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 Beijing. Beijing. Is, is it Beijing in China? Oh, I should not say Beijing. I'm doing. I'm making poop now, like like Muhammad. Okay, let us change it. I'm going to the to the Great Wall. The Great Wall in the border between China and the border between uh, Honolulu. All right. If you know how many Chinese in a communist country celebrate Christmas, you will not believe it. Christmas is an amazing occasion. The pagans, the Muslims, the atheists, they try to fight Christianity, but the fact they cannot. It's an every, every, let us say, in every tradition in the world now, the whole world celebrate the new year. Do you know what the new year means? This is the year of the Lord. The communists in China, they celebrate the year of the Messiah. The Muslims in Saudi Arabia, they celebrate the, the year of the Messiah. Your computer run by the year of the Messiah. Your salary is paid by the year of the Messiah. You cannot run away from his name. For his name is a glorious. And he brings happiness to every house. You see, if I see a Hindu, and a Hindu, he is supposedly for me, is not following the, the, the true path to believe in the Messiah. I have no problem to say to him, happy whatever he have is celebrating. Nothing wrong with being peaceful with people, being loving. This person is happy. Why you are so desperate to fight his happiness? If you want to invite him to your religion, if you think your religion is a true religion, it's not by saying, I'm not going to say to you, Merry Christmas. If a Muslim celebrating his Ramadan, which is a pure pagan practice, and I don't believe in his stupid Ramadan at all, and he is celebrating, I have no problem with him celebrating. Why not? I'm, good, you know, I'm happy for him if he's happy. I explained to him that this is not through God and this is false tradition, but no problem. I mean, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'm not going to be offended for a guy is happy. Why the happiness of others insult Islam?
Islam is insecure cult. And because they feel insecure, they feel that anything is a threat. Do you know what I mean? Once I have a neighbor, I used to live in an apartment. Uh, his wife, she called me and she said, we have a thief in our house. I got my gun and I went to his house and I found that behind the door, he have a plant and the plant is moving. So this stupid idiot, he opened the door. He's so scared, he's insecure. He felt something moving behind the door, but he have a plant there. It's a big plant. It's the branches of the, the plant. They, they, they touch the door. It is dark. He ran away to his wife and the wife, she called me. That what you do when you are insecure. Anything is scaring you. Even if it's a shadow or a shade. So a Muslim man is scared of his shade for he have insecure cult. He knew that his cult cannot survive unless we stay angry. We have to be alarmed for anything is offending us. Did you see brother? Did you see they are insulting the Muslims? Why brother, why? Did you see the, the cheese, the French cheese that says La Vache Yeah. Well, this is this is a cow. It is it is making fun of the Quran. What? Did you see the cow is laughing? Yeah. Okay. Don't we have a chapter in the Quran? It's a bigger chapter. It's called the cow chapter. Uh, uh huh. Obviously, they are making fun of us. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you say. They get offended for they are coming from insecure, stupid cult. This is the truth. You know, I, I, don't, I don't really like I, I, if a Muslim don't believe that uh, he should celebrate the Christmas. No problem. I mean, I understand. I, we don't want you to celebrate Christmas. Don't celebrate it. But they have a problem of insecurity. They have a problem of fear. And the fear is that if a Muslim. He celebrate a Christmas, he will find out that Christianity bring happiness. And Islam is a stupid, lonely cult. Me as a Muslim, I celebrate Ramadan. What I do in Ramadan, my belly will become so big like a balloon. I spend two hours in the bathroom to get rid of what I ate all night. And I watch porn all night long. In the morning, I sleep. This is religion. What is the happiness in this religion? Muslims are so upset from Santa Claus. Why Santa Claus is bad? Santa Claus became a great way to share charity and nobody know who you are. People, they can give donation to kids and the kids do not know who is this person. It's a great way. You can bring happiness to the face of a child or even to a family. But Islam is against happiness. This is why you will see Muhammad. He forbid the music, but yet in his house he have Billy dancers. He forbid Muslim men from having sexual intercourse with the women without witnesses, but he have sexual intercourse without witnesses. He forbid Muslim men from entering a house without the permission of the owner of the house. But he can go inside any house and he can have sex with the wife of the house. And this is how he took his own son wife. Muhammad, he have, according to Ibn al-Arabi, 16 a privilege. About 12 of them is about sex. What is the privilege Islam is giving to you, Muslims? You are an angry person, unhappy, unsatisfied, upset all the time. And you are suffering from phobia. And the funny, the Muslim, they call us Islamophobia. When they are the one who get offended by anything. The Muslim, the first thing in the morning when he wake up, what he do? Before he say good morning, 
if <laughs> ever he say good morning, he starts saying, oh God, don't make me the same as the Christians, the lost Christians and the cursed Jews. Like what? Start your day and say, hello, how are you? We love everybody. What do you mean don't make me like the Christians? What's wrong with the Christian? You dream to live like the Christians. You are leaving your country. You cross the, the, the ocean to come as a refugee between the Christians. Isn't it, this is the truth? I invite all the Muslims to enjoy Christmas. Try it. Bring a Christmas tree to your house and see the happiness on the face of your children. Invite Santa Claus to your house and see how your children, they will behave differently. They will be different. And don't forget to be thankful for the name which you celebrate, which is the name of Christ, which is mentioned in your Quran, and you Muslims do not know even why he was called the Christ. The name of the Christ itself is a clear proof that he is your God and he is your Savior. If you ask any Muslim, what the Christ mean? They say to you, it's coming from the word Al-Masih, the one who wipe out things. So are you saying that the Messiah is going to wipe out your sin? Where is Muhammad and where is the Messiah? The Messiah is alive. Muhammad is the dead man. So you Muslims, you better celebrate. The one is watching you as we speak now. Not the one is dead in the grave. The one who your Islamic books, he said, it says he stink when he died for Muslims refused to bury him for three days. The Muslims refused to bury Muhammad for three days, hoping that he will do a miracle. The same as what the Messiah did. But they were so disappointed. Muhammad, he told them, that the graves cannot swallow the body of a prophet. The grave cannot consume the body of a prophet. And after three days, Muhammad nails became blue. His belly started giving fart non-stop like in the month of Ramadan. And he stink. That what happened to your prophet. And actually, this story alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. You want to deny it? It's up to you. And by the way, anything I say here, I challenge any Muslim to call me and says to me, show me. Show me where you get this from. Like, do you want to show you Muslims that your prophet is stink from your books? Do you want Muslims to show you your prophet saying that the body of the prophet will not decay, will not be consumed? Challenge me. Right now, right here, and people will laugh at either you or me. It's very simple.